crystal graffiti artists are very conscious of the Banksy phenomenon. Where the strengths of this area lie are in creativity. Everyone just respects what everyone else does and respects their success and there doesn't seem much jealousy with it. To some he's an inspiration, of course. This is BS2 and it is the most neglected area in one of our major cities and change is coming. Graffiti seems to be quite an insular community in some ways. A lot of people just do it for the art and they don't really care. I have got some good stories I'd love to tell you, but Banksy has said he doesn't want to be talked about. Absolutely, so I'm here with James Knoll, um, <laughs> and you, you do your hit, I'm here with Rob Tyler. I'm here with Rob Tyler. And we're talking about our documentary on graffiti, which has been tentatively named Aftermath for some reason. Why did we choose Aftermath? Well, Rob, essentially it is about the aftermath of Banksy. How has Bristol changed because of the phenomenon known as Banksy? Did we actually get that? Is that what the documentary is actually about? No, it's actually about our journey of people telling us to go away because they've got fed up of everyone talking about Banksy. That's it, you know, you can't, you can't get involved in a community without someone telling you to, to leave. In this case, pretty much everyone, everybody told us, to, they told us to leave. Right, basically we've just had a confirmation email from a guy called Julian Monaghan who owns Gorilla Galleries. Um, he's invited us to come down, have a little look, have a little chat around. Um, and we're going to see who we can meet and, and what we can find out about the graffiti scene in Bristol. Yeah, yeah, it should, it should be good. There should be quite a few of them there. Have you ever bought or handled or seen a, a Banksy piece? Yeah, yeah, I've got a few at home. Do you not want to sell those? Are they not like worth absolutely tons now? I'm not too worried about selling them to be honest with you. I, I'm still enjoying looking at them. I mean I didn't really buy them to to sell, I just kinda I bought them to look at and I haven't as yet got bored of them. In fact I knocked one over and banged my ankle today when I was tied in my bedroom. It really really bloody hurts. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, I've been kind of involved in, in kind of the graffiti world through photography more than anything else. And it, it was just getting more and more sort of annoying seeing this kind of work of other people, other artists being photographed and then just oh, being yes. put onto canvases and, and then being sold in, in sort of card shops and God knows where else uh, for a huge amount of money. I just thought it was a real rip off and people should just get out there and buy sort of original pieces of other artists that they haven't necessarily heard of. Not, you know, it's great to, to educate some people that have only kind of say heard of Banksy or something like that and, and and it's really good to then meet the artists and also as stupid as it sounds and give them money it's, that's really, really quite a pleasant thing to do this is, uh, yeah it was good good successful night lots and lots of people and a nice headache today to go with it all so. <laughs> how much how many pieces did you sell I don't know actually um, Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Some of the guys who came in last night were banging on the door, they were total dealers and just wanted, it's not about, um, it's not about kind of, Enjoying it is about buying it from me so they can put it on, on their website and make more money from it. Yeah. Do you support that kind of action? Because um, I obviously negotiate with the artists what, what we think is a fair price for the pieces, and then, and then if, if they, you know, these guys come in and, and buy it and, and can put it on the internet and get more money for it, fair enough, but it, it does seem a little bit frustrating that the money's not going to its home being the artist, really. But. Yeah, just got something caught in my throat, and I was just waiting for you to finish. I was like, oh, <coughs> yeah. Well, you, sh you should definitely get down to weapons of choice because that will be a great night, really good. Yeah, yeah. I guarantee that. Are you on Facebook? 
Uh, yeah, 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 we'll go for it. Because uh, if you get on Weapons of Choice on Facebook, obviously, then there's tons and tons of photographs from the first one as well. Let's see if I can get on there. This is my favourite shot of the whole night. Uh, just get an idea of the crowd and two artists there. Just having a bit of a, a, bit of a laugh and all that sort of stuff. It's a wicked shot. It's, 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 a, it's a night like you would not, not have experienced before, I would say, because, I mean, I, I don't... I, I haven't been to many places where the, the, the focus of the evening is, isn't the music, isn't dancing, it is watching people drawing and that's basically, and you just think, wow, that's just great. And it is, it, it's, you know, it, it's quite hypnotic and you sort of have a beer or two, but you don't, it's not getting smashed because it's Tuesday night and you're going to work the next day, but, it, but you have a few beers, have a chat to people and you, know, you sort of look up every so often to see how, how far the thing's developed and it's just really, really good. Cheers. Absolutely, we'll send you a, a YouTube link. Oh, wicked. Right, we'll catch you in a bit then, mate. Cheers. See you in a bit. Hello, James. Hello, Robert. How was Brecky? It was absolutely divine. Wicked. Coming next. So how often are you sort of out and about taking pictures of this stuff? Every week. Um, I've been doing it now for years on and off. Um, so luckily I've got quite a backlog of stuff, but at the same time, um, there's new stuff going up the whole time. There's places I know about, places I haven't been to yet. Places I need to get better photos of. Um, and to do a blog daily, I need to be out there weekly, basically. There's a magic head. Magic, he did the stuff. That looks like dot .com there as well, just by the magic head with a dot and a com. Um, he's the guy in that Bristol Graffiti video. Um, but yeah, that's um, by Toy Soul, by the look of it. Keep the peace. Um, but that's been quite tagged. That little eye there at the end is Sabon. Yeah, totally. This, this was Comfort's house, apparently. Um, cool old Rasta guy um, who allowed them to paint this one summer in 2002 uh, and got then, um, unfortunately died a few years later, apparently. Uh, so this was done by the TCF, um, 20th Century Frescoes, and ARG, the ha Avago Heroes. Um, so you can see TCF and ARG up there. Um, and it's basically a massive collaborative piece. Um, you've got Feek doing those, uh, those big people there. That dude flying a little model plane with TCF and ARG across to another guy over the other side. Um, I think that's a little sick boy temple there. This isn't signed sick boy, but um, that's very much a little sick boy temple. So, but yeah, across the top you've got Feek, Paris, Pong, Eco, Zems, Fet. Cheers, comfort. Welcome to Irie Island. Um, I really like this piece a lot. Um, is there a so, lot of that sort of collaborative effort around then, sort that, of in the community? That is, but I suppose it's one thing that might have changed actually since Banksy's been doing this stuff and people started <laughs> making money out of it. Maybe since Banksy, maybe just it was going to happen anyway, I don't know. Um, but people seem to get less time apparently to come together and, uh, and do collaborative pieces nowadays because they're all busy. But I guess people grow up as well, they get wives, they get kids, they get you know other commitments and stuff. Um, but definitely there's, uh, there's still a massive ethos is it, with it. Yeah. yeah, this is um, this is all done by uh, can't remember. I think it's Zen's Paris, Beak, probably Dicey. It says on the side. Um, yeah, it's Herbert's Bakery. It's a really, really, really cool bakery in Bristol. Um, and they got the TCF to do uh, to do well their wall basically. And their big croissant. There's the bakery inside, like the walls broken down, and then you got you know, there's the bakery uh, in action sort of thing. Um, big background and stuff. It says up there who did it. You're trying to build up a comprehensive sort of archive of everybody there. Yeah, a record of what's happened, a history, uh, you know, art is definitely, graffiti art is definitely a temporary thing and it's kind of the better for it, but at the same time, um, I think it's nice to record what happened. I mean, this guy, um, Killer, he's all over the shop. These little ghosts um, done in that style are all over the shop at the moment. Um, and I don't know who he is, I don't know what else he does, if he does anything else, um, but that's just appeared and it's a part of the Bristol graph scene. Um, maybe he'll stop doing it, maybe he'll get caught, maybe he's been caught already, who knows. Um, but yeah, eventually those will stop um, and people forget about them. But it's been quite nice on the blog sometimes, I put up stuff from back in the day and people have gone like, oh, I remember that, yeah, definitely, I haven't seen that for ages, thanks for, thanks for sort of getting, recording it and whatever. So it's good that it's temporary and it's good that it doesn't last and it's not such a shame there isn't Banksy's around anymore. Um, they never were going to, they never were going to stay. <coughs> on that wall there on the motorbike, these be a big 